In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on data binding in JavaFX, and this time we're going to be discussing observable collections and how those are used to populate widgets with lists. In this particular application, we have a very similar setup to what you have seen previously. We have a button and a text area that we can type some input, and we have a combo box that is ready to be populated but there's nothing in that yet. So this is a very similar setup to what we have in the previous tutorials. The first thing we need to do is go to our FXML and we need to look at our combo box and we need to give it an ID so that we can reference it in code. And we'll just give it a name here. Just like in previous tutorials, I'm going to go over multiple te techniques to accomplish using observable collections. And we're going to start in the controller first. So we're going to go ahead and create an observable list of strings. And we're going to give him a name. We're just going to populate a list of some names for now. We need to use the FX collections library. We're going to create an observable array list. And we're going to go ahead and pre-populate it with a few names just as an example of what's going on here. Okay, now that we have our list of names, we need to get a reference to the combo box that we have in the FXML. So let's do that. Now that we have our combo box reference and we have our list of names, we need to go ahead and remember that our names need to have public getters and setters in order for the combo box to be able to access them. So again, we're going to do alt insert down here at the bottom. We're going to get our observable list with some accessors here. So now we are ready to hook our combo box up to our list of names. And the technique that we do use to do this is very similar to other techniques that we have shown previously. We're going to grab our combo box of names and we want the set items property. You see that the items is actually an observable list, so that matches with what we're creating up top. So we want to set items and we want to give it our list of names. And now when we run this, you'll see that our combo box will have these names populated in the dropdown, which is exactly what we want. And here are, here's our combo box with their names. And that is the first technique, very simple, setting the items of the combo box to an observable collection. Now, before we move on to the next technique, I'd like to talk a little bit more about observable collections and why they are useful. What they allow you to do is to actually modify this list of names in code or upon some condition and have the combo box be automatically updated to reflect the new list. So to demonstrate that, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the existing button and text fields that we have already set up and I'm going to modify the code such that when you click on this button and if you have a new name in this text field here when you click this button this name will then be added to the existing drop down list so in order to do that we're going to go in our handle button action uh, method here that we've used previously and we're going to get the text field text. So what we're going to do is whatever the user types, we're going to add it to our list of names. So let's go ahead and put him in a temporary variable. Now what we'd like to do just very briefly is do a couple of little sanity checks to see if the value that is typed um, is null, we don't want to add it in that case, or um, if the value already exists in our list of names, we don't want to add them again. So let's check our names to see if he uh, contains this temp value. And if, if either of those conditions are true, 
we're not going to do anything. We're just going to return. Now, if we do have a, a good value, we're going to go ahead and take our names list and we're going to add the string value from our text field that we typed in to the list. And now what we should be able to see is when we type in a new name and we click the add button, it should be added to the list automatically for us. So let's type a new name and we're going to click the add button and now you'll see that this appears uh, in the list just as we would expect. If we add again or multiple times you'll see there's only one new name in here because we're doing that check. So I have mentioned other techniques that we can use to work with observable collections and they're going to look very, very familiar to you. So what we're going to do is comment out the setting of the items uh, in the code here and we're going to go to the FXML and we're going to do it in this class instead. So we can grab the items property and just as we have done previously we can reference the controller and again if you're using IntelliJ the autocomplete here is wonderful and the FXML file it knows that there's a list of names that we can bind to and now when we run it we'll see the exact same result we had previously only we're doing the link up here in the FXML file. And again, here we have our list of names and we can type a new name and add it to the collection just as we have done previously. There is one other technique I would like to show you. It's a little interesting because instead of creating the collection in the Java class, you'll actually do it here in the FXML. And to do that, we'll need to create some item, an items list, uh, just as you might expect. And again, we're going to grab our FX collections um, library, and we need an FX factory where we're going to create an observable array list. And this is creating the same objects that we had in code. And we're going to create a string. Again, just like we were doing previously, you could create other things. You could create doubles or integers or things like that. Uh, and we're going to set its value. And just to show that we're doing something different here, we're going to use numbers this time, I think. So um, now we're just going to create several of these and give them some different values real quick. Okay, now when I run this, again, I, I want to show you that you're still going to get a list of items in your combo box, but it's being created here in the FXML instead of the code behind. Now we can still reference this in the code behind. In order to do that, we actually need to give it a name, however. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll give it an ID of new items. And we'll grab this, we'll go ahead and save it. And now in the controller where we're um, adding to the list in our button click, instead of referencing names, we want to reference the new items, but we don't actually have a reference to him yet, so we need to go ahead and do that. So we'll, and this time we're referencing something from the FXML, so we need to indicate that, and we're going to have an observable list and its name. Now let's watch what happens when we run this. Now if we type 5 here and we add it to our list, we'll see that the linkage is once again working as we would expect. That is all I would like to go over with observable lists today. There's a lot more really powerful things that we can do with these now that we have a foundation of how they work and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please do take the time to like or comment on these videos if they're useful to, uh, to you. They help us uh, tremendously in providing uh, content uh, in the future. Thank you.